Hi everybody. This week you can now download Demon Attack, The Next Wave, and Atlantis, A City Rebuilt from the Retro Gamers Club website. If you're a member, you can download that and you can play to your heart's content on your emulator, put it in your Wii, your DS, your PlayStation, your Android, your PC, your Mac, your Linux, whatever you do. You can even put it on SD card and play it with an Atari, what is it, Atari Max Ultimate? So you can plug it into your ColecoVision or your Phoenix, whatever way you want to do it. But now they're available. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time here this week and just show you some gameplay. Show you the various features of each game so that you get a feel for it. Come along. Before we go too far into this, I just wanted to show you that when you get to this main screen where you select the game you want to play using the controller up and down, to select the game, you would press the fire button, which is the left button. But if you press the right button, which is the arm button, it changes the game slightly. In the case of Demon Attack, when you press the arm button, there is no background, making it more like the Atari 2600 version. And in the case of Atlantis, when you press the arm button, you stay in daytime mode. You don't get evening, night, or morning mode. It makes it a little easier to play. So once you get to the title screen here, Press the fire button to start Demon Attack. Then you select your level, easy, normal, or hard. What that does is that increases the speed of the demons and how quickly they spawn and how fast the bombs drop. The higher the number, the faster, or the higher the level, the harder the level, the faster everything is. In Demon Attack, there are eight demons. They come in waves of eight each. So for the first level you have the one demon, you have to kill eight of them. Then the next level you have the next demon, you have to kill eight of them, and so forth. The first four waves, they drop raindrops or little bomblets, whatever you want to call them on you. Bird poop, you could call it that. The next four, they drop laser bolts. Starting on level, uh, on wave, yes, starting on wave four, when you hit them, they break up into solo demons and come at you, which now you have to kill each individual demon. So you can see there's a pattern there. The first four waves, they're just big demons dropping bombs on you. The next four waves, they're big dream demons dropping lasers on you, but when you shoot them, they break up into two, and then one of them keeps dropping lasers on you, and if you shoot one of them, the other one comes and dies bomb dive bombs on you. Now when you get to level eight, something changes. What changes is we restart those eight waves again, but now the bombs that are falling come after you. So when they fall, instead of falling straight down, they move towards you wherever you're at. And this will continue on for the next eight waves. When you get to level 16 or wave 16, they're interchangeable at first, but they're not in a way too. So when you get to level 16 or wave 16, they speed up and they go faster towards you. When you get to level 24, that's when the trick kicks in. At level 24, when you shoot the demons, well, first off, they're, they're never big. They're always small now. So they spawn and they come in as split demons already. And when you shoot one, the other one dies bombs on, dive bombs on you. And if you don't shoot it or kill it, it will leave a crater in the ground. And if there's a crater in the ground, you can't cross over that crater. So you can get trapped in the corners until they finally kill you. Then when you get to level 31, or 32, or wave 32, whatever you want to look at it, the waves reset back to the beginning again, but the speed go increments up a little higher. It may sound a little tricky, but it actually works out really well. The next game is Atlantis, A City Rebuilt. This game is based visually on the Intellivision version of Atlantis, unless on the Atari version of Atlantis. The difference being, on the Atari 2600 version of the of Atlantis, you had the one controller, and basically all you did is you controlled whether you were shooting from your left cannon, your middle cannon, or your right cannon. So they would shoot. Actually, was it, was it middle cannon? Maybe it was just left and right. But either way, you were just shooting across the screen. You could not aim them. The difference with the Atlantis version, or the Atlantis, the Intellivision version, is that they took it to the next level. First off, you do have a gun on the left and the right as you do in this game here, but you also have a ship that you can take off with. 
then fight the thing. Fight the aliens as they're coming. What you do to start that, to start the fighting is you would press the number one key, your ship launches up, it's called a sentinel. The sentinel launches up in the air, and you have about 90 seconds of fuel to fly around. When you get close to running out of fuel, you want to be over top of your landing pad so that your ship can land back down without crashing. If it crashes, you don't have a sentinel until the next morning. Then you get one back again. Also, you may have noticed the color change on the screen as it's playing in the background there. A day is broken up into four sections. You start out the day at noontime, and that's the blue sky. Then after you complete a wave of Gorgons, that's what they're called, Gorgons. When you can, Every alien back in the 70s was called a Gorgon, it seemed. But once you complete an, a wave of Gorgons, you now go into evening. Evening has a gray sky. And again, you have another wave of Gorgons. Once you complete a wave of Gorgons there, then you go into night, which is totally different than everything else. Where the sky is black, the only way you can see the aliens is when the spotlight is shining on them. And then once you complete that, then you go to the morning time. In the morning time, the sky is red like a sunrise. And at morning time, you also get your sentinel back if, it died, if you crashed it. And you get to start the day all over again. Under the water, you can see the new city of Atlantis that was built. There's a number of things there. The yellow and green pylons on the left and right hand side are actually power generators, and they generate the power for the force field that's over top of the buildings. The little bubble, glass bubble, glass dome buildings, those are farming facilities where they grow the food. And then down underneath the force fields is the actual buildings where people live in. So when the ships come across, they will drop a nuke, or it looks like a nuke. First thing they're going to do is take out the power generators. Then they will work their way from left and right, destroying everything until they get to the last piece. Once the last thing is destroyed, it's game over. If you are able to make it through a level to the next section, like from noon to evening, evening to night, night to morning, you get a piece back. You get part of your system back. First thing you get back is the power generators. And then you'll get buildings and so forth after that. But it's always power generator first. So odds are you're probably never going to get anything back but power generators. Because it, really only, it only gives you one piece back. And that's the first thing to go. So you're going to get power generators back. But you do get pieces back. And down on the bottom on the left and right hand side. Those circles there show you the number of missiles you have. When you select the difficulty level, it not only does it change the speed of the Gorgons moving across the screen, it also changes the number of missiles that you have for each gun. I believe the numbers off the top of my head are 14 on easy, 12 on normal, and 10 or maybe 9 on hard. The number of missiles you have on your Sentinel when you take off and you're shooting at things, that doesn't change. You don't run out of them. You just run out of time on them. You have to land to refuel. There you have it. I hope you enjoyed watching that preview. Get a good idea of how the games play. And if you're a member, go to the website, retrogamersclub.us, and download the ROM and have some fun. If you're not a member, consider becoming one. There's a link on the page, retrogamersclub.us. Click on the link that says info, and from there, you can go to see all the details about the site or about the club. Or you can click on join and go ahead and join fifty dollars a year and as of right now we have let's count them up we have crazy climber redux turmoil arcadian crazy chicky jr and demon attack and atlantis we have six games on there six full-blown games five of them were produced on cartridge the sixth one or four of them were on cartridge the fifth and sixth are download only and we have some other games on there that are demo games that we are testing out to see if we're going to produce them later. Grey Castle is one of them. And don't forget, if you join the club, you can send us your hardware that's broken and we can fix it for you. Have a great day.